Okay, so, uh, yeah, let me tell you how I, how I did this. Um, yeah, so, the, the, I, I've known this passage before. It's a pretty famous passage. But um, this is the first time I actually tried to put it into a devotional or, like, sermonic form. Um, and so it started, it started from last week when we did the exercise together. That was the really, like, first time where I started looking at how I'm going to uh, explain this. So I did the exercise of all of you. That was my first step, okay? I did the exercise. Now, when you look at your devotional passage, you're going to want to do all the steps that are in here too, okay? And so um, you need to take as much time as you can to do all these things, right? Read the cross-references, try to paraphrase it, um, ask yourself these questions. What does the passage teach me about God? How does God's character change my view of self? And what should I do in response, okay? And so that was all done last Sunday when I was here in class. And so during the week... What I did, and this is what I do um, for most of my sermons and Sunday school lessons too, is that I use Google Docs. So I just opened a Google Doc and I put the verse, I copied and pasted the entire passage onto the doc. Okay, so I have have it all. Um, So I can just write. I told you that writing helps me... uh, you know, uh, clear my thoughts. And so that's what I do. I I throw it on the paper. And so um, what stood out to me from the passage um, were those, these points, actually. Um, You'll see that these words are exactly in there. Prayer and practice, right? Those are very clearly in the text, right? So normally when I'm giving my Sunday school lessons or a sermon, I look for the words that are exactly in there. So there's no arguing about like, well, that's a word, that word's not even in there. No, it, it's there. Um, now this third one, the second one though, this positive thinking, that, that's not in the text like word for word, right? But um, last Sunday when I was doing the exercise, when we did the paraphrase, I, I, I put that you need to think about what's good, beautiful, and true, right? That, that's what I put when I paraphrased the passage last week. And so I was thinking about that, and I was like, well, you know, that, that's good, right? But then this still needs some definition, right? Because people have different de- definitions of what's good, beautiful, and true. And I know that Paul, he, he doesn't just mean think generically about what's good, beautiful, and true. Everything that Paul would say um, is that, you know, it, it would be grounded in God, right? It would be grounded in Scripture. And so I just said, okay, positive thinking, but I need to highlight the fact that it's grounded in God. Now, it, it worked out for me. Because the P's made sense. I try to do alliteration if I can, or I try to do something that's, like, memorable. Um, And so that's why I ultimately chose the wording positive thinking. Um, I think if you, you, like, read in a commentary or something, or, like, in a study Bible, it might say, like, dwell. Oh, no, not, sorry. It wasn't a commentary. It was a CSB. The, The Christian Standard Bible uses the word dwell. Dwell on these things. And so I said, okay, that, that just means like meditation. Um, and I just decided to use positive thinking. Sometimes you just have to make a choice on what wording you're going to use. Um, now, a step that, that, I, yeah, that I need to tell you about here is that I, I use my ESV study Bible. Okay, so Google Docs. And then from there, I use the ESV study Bible. Okay, and it's the same Bible that, that we've been using in class, these things. Right. So I use the ESV study Bible. I read all the notes. I read all the references. Um, they're all there for, for us to read. And then what I did was I looked at different Bible translations. So my favorite translations to look at are um, NIV, okay, and then the Christian Standard Bible, and then the New American Standard Bible. So I'm just comparing the translations now. And you can do that online. You just search for these things online and then you'll be able to get the text. Now, um, sometimes it will have different words, and that will help me figure out how I want to make my points. Um, but sometimes if they're the exact same word, wording, then you know, okay, that, that's really the meaning. You, you need to stick with that. And so, um, you know, I'm looking at different translations just to compare what, what, is it, what does it mean, what does it say. Um, now, after that... Okay, after I'm doing all, all this work of like, you know, making the doc and then just reading the passages, all I do is I just think. I sit there and I just think about it. 
Now, thinking for me might look differently for you, okay? My thinking is normally just like I'm reading the passage over and over and over again and trying to find connections and trying to find the flow of thought. Um, it w- it's clear to me that he was, you know, this is the end of the passage. He's, he's trying to just give general encouragement. So you just have to try to put your mind into Paul and say, like, hey, what, what is he doing? Sometimes it's easy like this where you can list things off. Sometimes it's not so easy. But this one, it happened to be a list. And I was like, hey, that's easy. I can make a list. That will be my three points. Um, and so I'm thinking. So what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about the context. Okay, and, and that was done through the Bi- study Bible, right? It gave me the context of Paul's in prison. Well, if Paul's in prison, well, what's he talking about? Would he be anxious? Yeah, he would be, right? And so that's how I gave up my intro. Um, you know, how, how can I get into this passage? Um, I thought about the context. I'm thinking about the different words and phrases that I can use. And then I'm thinking about application as well. Now, nor- normally in my sermons, I, I don't like to give application at the very end. I like to sprinkle application throughout. And so that's what I try to do here. If, if you heard me, I actually asked you, will you have joy and thanksgiving in your prayers? Will you stay grounded in God when you're trying to think about things? Will you be a doer, not just a hearer? And so that, that's kind of where I had my application come in. Okay, so I'm thinking about all of these things. Now, um, at this point, it was probably like, like Wednesday or Thursday, maybe. Um, and I'm not like, I'm not really like sitting there, right? I'm, I'm kind of just going about my day and I'm just like having this in my mind. It, it literally is having the word of God dwell in your mind, okay? And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just thinking about it constantly um, throughout the week. I think it was probably around um, Wednesday evening or Thursday morning where I finally realized, okay, I'm going to put this in. Um, and, and I, I did think, okay, how, how can I frame this? I'm always thinking about how can I frame something, okay? Now, you might not need to feel like you need to frame something, but for me, I thought that, okay, I can frame it by talking about, is anxiety even a sin? Yes, it is, because it's in the passage. And then I can, you know, conclude by, by, by bringing up this word guard again. And uh, that, that's kind of how I wanted to frame it. If, I don't know if you caught that, but I, I, I began by asking you, oh, shoot. I began by asking, maybe that's why my glasses were bothering me. Okay, I'll fix that later. Um, But I began by asking you a question, you know, is anxiety a sin? And then at the end, I tried to bring it back to this word guard to show you that like, oh, you're, we're guarding against sin. That's what we're guarding against. So I tried to frame it in that way, beginning and ending. Um, And then when I, when I, when I figured that out, that's when I was able to solidify the main truth because I was like, okay, obviously the passage is about peace, but how can I make that into a sentence? And that's when it occurred to me, okay, I can, I can talk about it by framing it in, in the, to, by using guards as my, my verb here. Um, normally for my main truths, I, I like to talk about God first. Now, this passage is about us, right? God's guards are anxious hearts and minds, but I like to at least begin by talking about God and putting him first. And that's how I came up with the peace of God guards our anxious hearts and minds, right? Context here. So that we can be free from sin. And that, that's where I, you know, guarding against the sin. That's how I try to bring that back. And face trials with joy. Now this, this is purely from the context of the passage, right? Because if I'm just looking at this, there's nothing really here that talks about like trials. But if you know the context of Paul being in prison and he's writing to the church to tell them, hey, don't be anxious. You're going to face trials like I am in prison, but you don't need to worry. You can trust God in these things. You can go to him in prayer. That's how I came up with this last part. And I think that made it even better for us, right? Because now not only does it tackle sin, but it makes us uh, care about the future. Uh, so our present and our future, this, this, this verse matters. Um, and that's how I came up with it. Now, normally for me, I don't figure out my title and my, and my subtitle until, um, until the end, but sometimes it, it works out. I think in this, in this instance, it worked out for me. And after on Thursday, right? Or yeah, Thursday, after I solidified this, then I went to different art. I just kind of did a random search online <clears throat> and I checked my thoughts against the Gospel Coalition and Desiring God just to see what they wrote. Okay, now sometimes you can check that beforehand 
and I don't think it's wrong, but for me, I like to throw stuff without consulting anybody else. Um, then I'll go to this type of stuff. Um, I did not consult commentaries, but if I was doing a sermon, then I would also do commentaries here. Okay. Um, so for sermons, normally, uh, yeah, that, that's when this would come in. So you, you always want to do the leg work first, okay? Do your own work first. Then you go to what other people are saying, okay? So you, you have all these tools already. You have the study Bible, you have the translations, and then you have your own ability to think, okay? You do that first, and then you can go to these things to, to measure against it and to see, am, am I really on the right path? If you are, then good. If you're not, then go back and figure out, do I need to change something? Do I need to read more stuff and see, is there a consensus here? That's what you do. Now, this might have been too, you, you might not need to do this part for a devotional. I would encourage you to just do a quick search just to see if you're on the right track. Okay, but I think this is all doable. Notice, I didn't go to any language tools. Okay, I didn't consult the, the Greek for this, okay? And I didn't consult any like hardcore commentaries. Um, I, I, I do, and I am a firm believer that you can do your own work and um, come out with a, a reasonable devotion. Okay? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, so that was like a week's work of worth, um, or a week's worth of work. Um, and yeah, I would expect something similar to this. Uh, really? Any questions? Seriously? Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 a messy process, but it's worth the work if you if you put in and you do it. Um, when when you guys go to youth retreat, if you're if you don't go to youth retreat, um, and you're here for for that Sunday school lesson, I will probably do like a little a mini lesson on like how I prepare sermons. Um, to show you how I do that, and then I'll, I'll probably uh, tell you about like what I've learned after a year of, of preparing sermons. Okay, that that will be my my special lesson for you, or one of the points of that.